get them all When you think of what makes Ikir World special compared to other popular role-playing games, what comes to mind? For me, a big factor is the unique class system. In most games, you pick your class at the start of the game, and then you progress through years of content with that set class. Sure, there are talent points and other class-specific choices you can make, but ultimately, you're stuck with that class till the end of time. AQ Worlds might not have the most complicated class design when you look at a single class in a vacuum, but boy, it sure does have many classes. So much so, that the community is often arguing on how exactly the power scaling should go in terms of the strongest and weakest classes. Today, however, I'm going to be doing something TDA did a while back, and that is listing my top 10 favorite classes in the game. I am no beta tester, but I have played this game for almost 11 years and have used all sorts of different classes in that time frame. I want to point out that this is my favorite classes, not the best classes in the game or the best classes that I own. So I don't want to see any comments saying, Bro, this list kind of mid, like where is it all? Legion Revenant, Dark, Master of Moglinsters, I don't know, kind of cringe. These are my personal favorite classes that I have a specific bond with that I really enjoy using or classes that I think are extremely well designed. Without further ado, let's begin our countdown with number 10. We kick off this list with an unconventional class, the Glacial Berserker. First of all, I really enjoy the overall design. The skills give off strong viking vibes, and the theme fits the slow, hard-hitting warrior model this class has. Since most classes in AQ Worlds are so spam-oriented, it's good to see more complicated classes like these, which focus more on correct rotations and getting the correct effects rather than mashing your head against the keyboard 24-7. Glacial Berserker shines in a party, since it applies ridiculous debuffs to the enemy, a fun class to limit test chrono nukes and other hard-hitting classes. Next up, we have Vindicator of Thay. It was one of the first classes I really got excited about when starting to play this game, and the release with the Collector was such a blast. The class itself is the full package, damage over time, lifesteal, stun, and a massive nuke. It would be higher on the list if nowadays it wasn't pretty much unusable due to the ridiculous mana issues it has. Nevertheless, it's a special class for me, and still excellent at annoying people in PvP. At number 8 we have Chrono Assassin. As to why this class is so special, we need to go back in time to when Thief of Hours released with Span Saga. The last skill was something no one had ever seen, mirroring all damage to the attacker. This spawned videos of people one-shotting the almost unkillable Nulgath, which some of you might remember if you were around back then. Since we know that Thief of Hours is a garbage class now, it's so cool to see Chrono Assassin be a usable version of it. And it's not just usable, it's one of the most busted dodge classes ever. Sure, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but it can solo pretty much any non-challenge boss without breaking a sweat. The good old troll spellsmith. While it has lost some relevance in the recent years due to it being outclassed by modern farming classes, it will always be a solid option due to the ability to control your HP and mana pool efficiently. Even when Legion Evolved Darkcaster came out and was the most busted class in the whole game for years, true savants knew that proper stacking of Sigil allowed Troll Spellsmith to come out on top. The number 7 spot goes to the well-rounded and engaging Troll class. The number 6 spot goes to Shadow Stalker of Time. It has been the poster boy of being one of the best classes in the game, as well as being arguably the hardest to master. You can solo pretty much anything with it due to all the buffs and debuffs it applies, along with the insane dodge chance, haste, and ridiculous DPS. It also has a taunt, and it's multi-target so you can farm with it as well. 
The combat in this game is usually very easy, so there aren't a lot of classes like this. But as someone whose favorite video game of all time is StarCraft, I can really appreciate the high skill classes being among the most rewarding. No, this is not a mistake. The number 5 spot goes to Mage, the starter class. If you would rank classes based on how strong they are, relative to how long it takes to get them, Mage would easily be number 1. You literally get it for free at the start of the game, and if you pick something else, you can buy it for the price of one slime staff. The ridiculous explosion skill, paired with the fire plus ice combo, and its surprisingly good sustain, will make it a viable farming option very far into the game. It can't really solo, but you should have no problem getting the standard reputations to 10 with just this starter class. When farming low level quests or otherwise doing old content, I often bust out the trusty mage for some quality vintage gameplay. The fourth place goes to Dragon of Time. In my opinion, it's the most unique late game class in many ways. Firstly, the farming process was largely story focused, and the class actually manages to efficiently use healer enhancements. Tell that to someone in 2019 and they'll just laugh. The class is excellent at farming and soloing, and it's also good at tanking in a party. The animations are cool and fit the theme of an interdimensional dragon ripping its claws through time space. You also need to pay attention to how you use it, because your rotation differs depending on what you're doing with it. If used correctly, it becomes a beast that rivals the top tier classes in the game at pretty much anything but support. Chrono Dragon Knight It was my first Chrono I got back in the day, and after testing some of the other Chrono classes you can now buy in game, I will say I think Dragon Knight has the best design out of all of them. It doesn't try to be a hybrid of a Chrono class that can farm, nuke, support, and sustain itself all at once. Its sole purpose is to be used in a party with supports, and otherwise it's pretty terrible. But man is it good in a party. I believe after being in the game for 7 years, it still has the highest possible nukes under the right circumstances. It hasn't received many changes over the years, and the core concept has always been the same. If its HP and mana regain can be buffed, it becomes the literal destroyer of worlds. I have a lot of memories fighting Binky with our guild, and trying to get the biggest hits off with Chrono Dragon Knight, and that's why it's number 3 on my list. The first and second spots were really hard to decide, and this class could have been number 1 on a different day. There are many reasons why I love Bard so much. It has my favorite set of skill icons and attack animations in the game, and overall, the fact that a traveling Bard is a support for your heavy hitter classes in a party is a fitting idea. At one point it was the standout best support in the game, and every high level party had to have a Bard for extra damage, defense buffs and healing. The skill names and effects all make sense as to what they do, and the high haste makes it overall just a pleasant playing experience. I still use it for clearing low level content occasionally, but sadly as a support it's been outclassed by other supports for a while now. After a lot of thinking, the number one spot goes to Artifact Hunter. No, it's not the best class in the game. In fact, it's quite average, but my goodness is it fun to use and well designed. For those who didn't know, it's the birthday class of 2014, and the whole idea of the class is combining skills and effects of iconic items and bits from the lore to create this explorer type class that uses the power of the artifacts he or she has already gathered. The skills reference the Blade of Awe, Supreme Arcane Staff, shiny mirror shield, and the doom and destiny duality that often exists in lore stories. It has stood the test of time really well, never had any mana issues, has fun yet useful mechanics that still make it a valuable class for everyday use. 
It's definitely not OP, but is good at soloing, farming and PvP. Really cool class in my opinion. And that was a list of my favorite classes in AQ Worlds. I know this is a bit different to what we usually do, but hope you enjoyed nonetheless. If you're looking for a list that ranks the best classes in the game, stay tuned because we're working on an absolutely massive project that should come out soon. Alright, that's about all. Take care and catch you in the next video. Bye bye.